A man with a mental problem that causes him to have multiple personalities now has to try and find his way through New York. This is Moon Knight. Welcome to the Comic Story and Channel, where we take some of your favorite trade paperbacks and single issues, and we break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then we read them dramatically back to you. All alterations of the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Today we're going to be covering Moon Knight by Warren Ellis, issues 4, 5, and 6. Moon Knight is a superhero who has three people inside of him. He has Moon Knight, which is the superhero persona that many of you may be familiar with, the Batman-like character. There's Mr. Knight, who works with the police station and works with the detectives to figure things out. And then there's Mark Spector, the man behind the mask trying to sort it all out. Today's video is brought to you by Grammarly. Have you ever struggled writing a professional email, composing a tweet, or creating a Facebook post only to have it ruined by poor spelling and grammar? If you follow me on Twitter, you know that's pretty much every tweet I put out or post on our community page. Well, Grammarly is right for you, and that's why we took this as a sponsor, because I definitely need it. Grammarly is a great way to help you write with proper spelling and grammar, and with Grammarly Premium, you can also get clarity suggestions to help you write clearer. More concise sentences without any unnecessary or redundant words, and with premium, you can also get vocabulary suggestions to help you avoid overusing words and phrases. If you remember back in the day, we used to always do videos with the phrase, he punches him over and over. Things like this help you not do that. Grammarly is super easy to use as well, and you could just download the browser plugin, desktop editor, or mobile app and start writing on all of your favorite sites and apps like Gmail, Twitter, LinkedIn, and more. I use Grammarly all the time when writing business emails so that I always impress. Do more than just a spell check. Say what you really mean with Grammarly Premium. Get 20% off Grammarly Premium by signing up at Grammarly.com slash complete. That's 20% off at G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash complete. Each issue of Warren Ellis' run tells a separate storyline of things that Moon Knight is doing since he's returned to New York. And so we did one through three, and I'll link that down below, but it's time to do four, five, and six, like I said. So, here we go. Outside the busy Odenburger, a man sits on the side of the road eating his dinner. But as the white limo pulls up, Moon Knight tells him to get in and do not bring the food into the car. As the man gets in, Moon Knight asks, do you know Peter Oleron, Mr. Skeleton? Skeleton says that he did. He knew that Peter worked with him before his death. He spoke with Detective Flint and said to reach out. Moon Knight asks, how can I help? Skeleton goes on stating that he works in sleep research, and lately all of his patients have been having the same dream, which is impossible and it's driving them insane by inches. Moon Knight asks, what kind of sleep research? And Skeleton tells him that sleep is a process that allows the brain to remove toxins from its tissue via the lymphatic system. They study the dream state in relation to the neurotoxin load, protein activation, and lymphatic processing. Though he wouldn't expect him to know what any of that means. Moon Knight then asks to bring him to the new facility to meet the patients, and Skeleton says that Peter never mentioned what they did together. But he is not qualified to study somnological subjects. Moon Knight leans forward, stating that he is precisely qualified. Dreamers are people who travel at night, and that is his specialty. A short drive later, inside a skeleton's lab, he says that all of the patients are gone now until the issue is solved. They were attempting to induce lucid dream states, guiding the dream's physical mechanics through chemical messaging. Everyone was on drips and sensors. Moon Knight looks around the facility and asks, Is there an empty room? And Skeleton tells him that there is one, but it's damp. And if he's being honest, it stinks. God only knows what the previous owners were like. Moon Knight says he'll take it. As Skeleton hands him the key to lock the door from the inside, he says that it occurs to him that he might already be insane, and Moon Knight tells him he feels the same way. Now go to the office. I have work to do. Moon Knight enters the small, damp room, and he lays down. He folds his arms, telling Khonshu that they can hear him. Put him to sleep. Soon the ground around Moon Knight begins to sprout fungus, and Moon Knight falls through into another dimension. His form begins to change, traveling through this mystical fungal world. As he lands, hands begin to reach for him, but Moon Knight just cuts them down. And across the way, he sees a man standing there. The man turns with fungus growing out of his eyes, stating that he can't sleep, he can't wake, he's trapped here. And suddenly, Moon Knight is yanked through the wall and spit into an open field of faces. The faces tell him that they don't know if they're dreaming or if they're dead, or dead from dreaming, or trapped within their corpses. Help them! Just then a giant creature appears, and Moon Knight jolts right awake. He gets up, kicking the door down, running into Skeleton's office. Skeleton asks, what is it? 
but Moon Knight grabs him by the hair, slamming his face into the desk. And as Moon Knight pulls him over the desk, Skeleton yells that his brain is under attack, just like the others. Moon Knight slams him into the ground once more, telling him, SHUT UP! And he drags him back into the room. After being thrown against the wall, Skeleton shouts, asking, what is he doing? And Moon Knight kneels down, ripping up the floorboards, telling him to wake up. Beneath the floor lies a body. The rats skitter away, and under all of that is a corpse rotting with fungus growing on it. Skeleton quickly begins to lean forward, stating that that was one of their first test subjects. Off to the books, found him online. Found out too late that he had some kind of fungal infection in his brain that was killing him. He died in the dream state. We couldn't let anyone find out. So we wrapped him up and put him in the floor. Just for now. Just until. Moon Knight tells him to look at him. Down there. In the damp. In the deep. Rank with whatever crap they put in him. His brain sporulated. He's been breathing in his dreams. As the wind blows down the empty street, the white limo pulls up to a man standing on the side of the road. The window whirls down and the man says to get lost. Moon Knight thrusts his sword towards the man's throat, stating that he confiscated this from a man in Egypt who tried to take away someone from him. He's quite upset. He was told that the man still passes shards of his own ribcage when he goes to the bathroom. Now then. They've taken someone from their home, and he's not interested in the politics of the crime families. So don't even bother trying to justify it. How many people are holding that person in there? The man eases back to try and get away from the blade, stating, A dozen, maybe more, fifth floor. And Moon Knight says that he would assume that everyone is spread out, and the man says, You're guessing right. Moon Knight tells him, Good. And as Mr. Knight, they're going through the front door. After grabbing his baton, Moon Knight enters the building, and the man asks where the boards covering the place, not giving him a clue that they're closed. Without saying a word, Moon Knight bashes the man's face in and knocks him to the ground. A gunman comes out asking who is he supposed to be, and Moon Knight charges in, throwing a moon blade into the gunman's hand, bashing his face in, telling him, the one you see coming. A third man comes running down the stairs, but Moon Knight swipes the man's ankle, snapping it, throwing him on his back onto the railing. On the next floor, a bullet whizzes by hitting the baton, but Moon Knight looks at the cracked baton, firing it into the gunman's face, stating, Those cost real money, and I don't have a job. As he moves onto the second floor, he whips a moon blade upward into a man's mouth and kicks him over the edge. At the third floor, a large muscular man steps out and Moon Knight punches. The large man grabs Moon Knight by the face, stating that that ain't going to work. Moon Knight then takes two of his blades and jams them into the man's chest to free himself. And then he takes his jacket, covering the man's head, throwing him over the railings. On the fourth floor, Moon Knight rolls up his sleeves and he proceeds to take out anyone in his path. As he reaches the fifth floor, a well-dressed man steps out with two knives. Moon Knight throws a moon blade, the man deflects it, and Moon Knight looks at him. Impressive. The man swings, but Moon Knight catches his arm, snapping his wrist, and then he takes the other, driving the knife into the man's leg. After throwing him through a door, Moon Knight runs in, sliding on the ground, kicking out the next man's legs, shattering them. Another man comes running in with a bat, but as he gets close, Moon Knight hits him in the throat, telling him, I needed one of those. Now using the bat, Moon Knight bashes his way through everyone else and sees a man running for the roof. He ignores him, looking in the room, with a young girl is tied up and a man pointing a gun at her. The gunman says that he's pretty sure that this beats his bat. And Moon Knight tells him, I already love this bat. And you owe me a truncheon. And you can't kill me. But you can kill her, sure. But what saves your life after she's dead? Everyone already thinks the kid is dead. That loss is acceptable. Have they accepted yours? Are you ready to die today? The man lowers the gun. And as Moon Knight takes it from him, he cracks the gunman with the bat. Moon Knight unties the girl, telling her, Hello, Scarlet. I guess I must look pretty weird. My name is Mr. Knight. Scarlet reaches out, touching Moon Knight's face. She says that it's not a mask. It's his face. He laughs. <laughs> You're a smart kid. He then calls in his glider and begins to give it very specific instructions. Out on the roof, the man from before tries to run and escape, and the glider comes crashing down on him, horribly injuring him. And as Moon Knight walks out and kneels beside him, he tells him that they're going to have a chat. He's going to tell his friends. Tell them that he met him. And when they see him coming, they run. Several nights ago, when Moon Knight came to investigate the scene of the slasher murder, he met an officer, whom he told that he preferred to be the one to go into the sewers. That officer was Ryan Trent. Ryan watched Moon Knight walk away, and he asked why would they even let him do this, and Flint says not to take it personally. Ryan asks what's so special about this guy, is it because he's better than them? Because they have some weird buddies or something? 
and Flint told him that he lets Mr. Knight work because he has a crappy attitude and he's going to be a street cop until he dies. Those words, they sunk in. All his life, Ryan was met with hardship, always told to follow the rules, get a girlfriend, and nobody respects him. So he decided to become a cop instead of fighting for his country. And he was told that he doesn't even know what he wants, that he's just going through life like a ghost, that he's never going to be good enough for anything or anybody. Does he have to wear a bag over his head to be special, to get respect? The hell with that! He will find out what is so damn special about this Mr. Knight. So Ryan did some digging. There wasn't much on Moon Knight, but there was some information on his known enemies, namely the Black Spectre. So using the idea of the man that Moon Knight took down in the old shield bunker, Ryan got to work. He trained himself to be able to throw darts with extreme precision, because those moon boomerangs are stupid. Using the dead man's identity, Ryan began to question people. First, Marlene Arun. He asked if Moon Knight had anyone that he was close with, and Marlene told him that she hasn't heard from him in years, only read about him in the papers. Next was Jean-Paul Jachamp. Ryan flashed the shield, stating that he had a few questions. Did Moon Knight work with anyone? And Jean-Paul says that he works with a drone and a self-driving car. He doesn't work with anyone. And that is because the people around him do not survive. But there is one more thing that they should know, that he will never stop. Moon Knight will go on and on, using people, spending his bottomless pit of blood money, and he cannot die. And now Ryan has the information that he needs. He could become the Black Spectre. He was the opposite of Moon Knight, and once he kills him, he can replace him. Just imagine what Flint would think then when he reveals his own face as the one under that mask. He won't ever disrespect him again. Ryan's wife asks if he's going to murder Moon Knight and replace him. Ryan tells her that that's exactly what he's going to do. But there's one more thing about Moon Knight. He works alone. No ties. He's technically dead. And so is she. After killing his own wife, Ryan gears up and goes out into the night as the Black Spectre. Moon Knight gets a call of a murder and goes to investigate, but the murder was caused by Ryan, and he booby-trapped the body. As Moon Knight's limo pulls up to the car, Ryan detonates the bomb, blowing up the limo, and even himself away. Ryan walks out into the street, asking if he did it. Where are Moon Knight's special powers now? Where did all that moon crap and arrogance go? Ryan then looks to see Moon Knight flying in on his glider, but as he gets closer, Ryan shoots it down. Moon Knight jumps off onto the nearby building, and as he grabs a moon blade, Ryan throws a dart into his arm. Ryan tells him that this isn't going to be a fight. He is going to kill him because he is better than him. Then everyone is going to love him more than they've ever loved Moon Knight. Just then, Ryan's second explosion goes off and with him next to it. He's violently blown away, skipping across the street, and Moon Knight asks, Who the hell are you supposed to be? And he weakly tells him, The Black Spectre. Moon Knight leans down, ripping his mask off, telling him that he's going to tell him about the Black Spectre. He really just wanted to be loved. He wanted his dad and his wife to love him. He wanted his crew to love him. And I don't know you. Now me? People who love me suffer and die, and I never want to be loved. Moon Knight pulls the dart out of his eye, tossing it, telling him, and that's why Moon Knight always wins. And there you guys have it, the continuation of the Moon Knight saga, which hopefully we'll have room for over the next couple of weeks to let you guys get to it. This was placed up as a vote on our Patreon and our Twitter and on our Discord as what people wanted to see. And I actually put this up against a Batman story and against a Spider-Man story, and all of you guys wanted to see Moon Knight. So if you want to be a part of that vote, please consider going to our Patreon, patreon.com slash We have the mini producer tier where you get to decide the direction that this channel takes in its content. Or just sit back and enjoy your videos. Just watching this video is the ending. Really does mean a lot to me and I appreciate all the time and energy that you guys have watching my insanely bad voice acting here on the channel. Seriously, thank you guys so much. It means a ton to me and that's all I got. I'll see you guys next time right here at the Comic Story Channel.